Welcome back to At Home with the Dogginses. Hello, everyone. And uh, today I want to start a new sub-series called Things We Kinda Remember. <laughs> oh, yes. Now, this is a sub-series where we talk about things that uh, we may have seen in our childhood or experienced in our childhood, but we haven't really revisited. Yep. So... It's basically the polar opposite of Obsession of the Moment because that is the video series where I revisit something I love or discover something new I love and research it obsessively. Mm -hmm. This is the series where I think of something that I saw or read or did a long time ago and do absolutely no research. I just speak about what my memories of that first experience are. Sounds good, babe. I also want to say, if you also kind of remember these things, please feel free to discuss it in the comments. But I implore you, do not comment if you've actually looked up these things. Yeah, yeah. If you've, like, we're probably going to get some details wrong as we kind of remember things. This is not an invitation to look up the correct in information and correct us. Only correct us if you also kind of remember yes this. yes <laughs> only correct us if from memory you can tell us we're wrong not if you can look it up and tell us we're wrong now that that's on the table first discussion i want to have for things we kind of remember yes did you ever see a series of pizza hut commercials in the late 90s called the pizza head show i have no idea what you're talking about okay so here's my memory of the <laughs> pizza head show okay it was basically Mr. Bill with a slice of pizza. Sure. I don't know if it was a ripoff or if it was made by the same people, uh, and I'm not going to look it up till later, but it was basically Mr. Bill, but with a slice of pizza with like a face with like olive eyes or like a pepper mouth that or something. That sounds weirdly familiar. I feel like this campaign, like I would see these commercials on Saturday morning and again, it's all in my memory. I couldn't tell you if this campaign lasted a week or two years. Yeah. I don't know. But it lasted long enough for them to do not toys of it because uh, Pizza Hut didn't have kids meal toys, but they had like fridge magnets of the characters. Wild. From these commercials. Did you have some? I don't remember if I had some or if someone else had some. But I remember they were like, I think they were fridge magnets. They might have just been paper dolls. But my memory is like mm -hmm. they were the kind of fridge magnet where you could put the different like clothes and face pieces mm -hmm. over them and basically do paper dolls, but on the fridge. Yeah. And they, do these come for free with the pizzas or did you have to buy them? I feel like you had to buy them. Then I feel I... like you didn't own them because that's something Jeannie would buy, I feel like, for your no, house. No, yeah. I, I don't think we own them. <laughs> but I remember seeing them. Maybe it was just like paper dolls that you cut out of the placemat or something. Maybe it wasn't fridge magnets. Mm-hmm. I do not remember for certain, but uh, basically what I remember is the Pizza Head show. It was this slice of pizza. There was this narrator. The voice given to the pizza slice was this very, oh, hey, I got Pizza Hut. It's like just a straight up Mr. Bill ripoff. Yeah, this is sounding really familiar. Yeah. And the antagonist was a pizza slicer who I believe was named Steve. Sure. Okay. I don't remember why. It was a pizza slicer, but... Basically, there were like two screws on it to be uh, eyes, okay. and it, it would always be uh, Mr. Pizza Head was in some scenario, and then the narrator would be like, "Like, oh, hey, look, here's Officer Steve," and uh, Pizza Head would be like, "Wait, he's not a police officer," and and <laughs> it would basically just be tormenting this poor Pizza Head, and it was mm -hmm. like abusing this character again. It's Mr. Bill, but yeah, with pizza, and. I remember my reaction to these commercials being mixed because on the one hand, I was a sucker for ad campaigns with their own lore. Uh huh. But on the other hand, I found it kind of off-putting that this ad for Pizza Hut is, hey, we torture our pizza characters. <laughs> Th this innocent pizza character, you're just being mean to for no reason. Mm -hmm. The two I remember distinctly were, it was a party at Mr. Pizza Head's house and then uh, party time Steve comes and makes the party go wild. Then Officer Steve comes and says, you're disturbing the peace, and Mr. Pizza Hut gets arrested. Of course. The other I remember was like, it was a baseball-themed one uh -huh. where 
Steve was the umpire, mm -hmm. and the narrator's like, Mr. Beats Ed was like, hey, he's not an ump. And the narrator's like, sure is, and he got Ken Griffey Jr. And you never see Ken Griffey Jr.'s face, you just see his hands holding the bat, and I think he ends up hitting Mr. Pizza Head with the bat or okay. something. Okay. But I remember thinking, if you're not gonna show his face, how can we prove that you really, like, I, even as a kid, I was like, so I presume Ken Griffey Jr. signed off on this appearance, mm -hmm. but not that I would know what he looks like by face, but I would assume someone would recognize him. Mm -hmm. It was just sort of like, do we have an intern? <laughs> yeah, I was like, so those could be anybody's hands. Yeah. And you're just saying it was Ken Griffey Jr. And then I don't remember seeing the commercial, but I remember seeing artwork in the Pizza Hut that when uh, the Star Wars special editions were coming out, they did a Star Wars edition of mm -hmm. Pizza Head where I believe Steve the Pizza Cutter was Leia for some reason. I was going to say, like, it, obviously Darth Vader, but... I mean, you would think, but... This was just one of those weird fucking ad campaigns that burned in my brain because it was weird and just unsettling enough that it made me uncomfortable, but also weirdly intrigued by the ongoing lore. And I think I, I was just like trying to come up with the narrative where it's like, okay, but what if they did one commercial where he has a happy ending? <laughs> Where, where, where this poor squeaky voice pizza boy has a happy ending. Come on, you squeaky voice pizza boy. You can do it. <laughs> I'm sure these commercials are on YouTube. Oh, I, I bet, yes. But again, I had no interest in looking them up before this because mm -hmm. this is about things we kind of remember. Yeah. <laughs> See, you have to realize this was back in the day where Pizza Hut was like a full service sit down restaurant with a salad bar and like low lighting and overhead chandeliers that had that sort of bar aesthetic and this is the thing you say this and i believe you but i feel like i never encountered one of these in the wild were you not a pizza hut family um we did occasionally do pizza hut we we're mostly Domino's, mm -hmm. or you know my mom would make pizza well of course because you're a family of real foodies <laughs> <laughs> but um i just don't have any memory of like going to pizza hut like you know restaurant at all like i always whenever i encountered it in the wild even when i was a kid it was always just as a uh, delivery joint maybe it didn't permeate the market in our area the way it did in your area or it could just be that your family didn't want your parents didn't want to take you out to pizza hut like if you were going out to dinner pizza mm -hmm. hut wasn't going to be what you did yeah we, we we honestly went to ruby tuesdays quite frequently I guess your school didn't do the book it program the same way. Nope. <laughs> so, uh, see, that's the thing is most of our pizza visits were because as a kid, if you read enough books, you got a free personal pan pizza. And back when I was a kid, I actually read a lot. Mm -hmm. This is less true of me now just because uh, I no longer have an attention span. <laughs> At our school, um, the, what they, they did for us was a bribery program, basically. So every 10 books you would read over the summer, uh, you would ha you could discount your lowest test in class. So everyone would read as many books as possible so that they could discount as many tests as possible to get a better grade. But there was no Pizza Hut cross promotion. No. Bribery. Just bribery. I also, like, one of those things you piece together when you're an adult looking back on it, it's like, oh, obviously... The idea behind Book It was like, yeah, promoting literacy, but it was really just if the parents bring the kid in to get the kids free pizza, the parent is going to buy something. Yeah, of course. And, you know, how, how much overhead are they losing by giving a kid a free personal pan pizza with a teacher's note? Yeah. I just miss those days of Pizza Hut where, I mean, Pizza Hut is fine. Mm -hmm. Like, it's greasy. It's mediocre pizza. It is the superior mediocre pizza to Domino's. I will say that. Probably true. Um, but I miss, I miss not necessarily the food so much. I just miss the aesthetic. And we don't have that anymore as almost every Pizza Hut is just a takeout place. Except for, oddly enough, the one near my parents' house, which is like a bar and mm -hmm. has tables and seating but it's still not like a pizza hut the way I remember it. Because there's also like a wing street too and like yeah, a few yeah, other yeah, things. Yeah. And but but it's it's like a sports bar aesthetic, yeah. Not like a uh, restaurant with a salad bar and a Miss Pac Man machine in the corner. Yeah. A uh, fun fact: um, after our car accident, um, we went there as our Valentine's Day date. 
Yes, our, our car accident last year <laughs> threw a wrench in our Valentine's plans. So we went to go take out some pizza because that was the closest thing that we felt safe driving to. Yeah. Pizza was also always like, I was aware as a kid that it was the same parent company as Taco Bell and KFC. Yeah. And I was always interested, you know, because I was a boring kid who was interested in boring things. Mm -hmm. I was I was always curious about why it was like a real restaurant and Taco Bell and KFC weren't. Mm -hmm. And then it was always weird to me whenever Yum! Brands was doing like their big Star Wars cross promotions because they did this in 97 and they did it again in 99 for Phantom Menace where basically Taco Bell, KFC, and Pizza Hut all had different Star Wars things uh -huh. at the same time. And uh, Taco Bell had the toys. In 97, Taco Bell had toys, including the little uh, Vader Yoda head thing uh, mm -hmm. in a cube with the mirrors that uses the same technology as that Transforming Pirates that they added to the beginning of Pirates Now, yeah, which, yeah. which is how I was able to figure out how that effect worked. Uh -huh. But Pizza Hut was just like, here's the characters' pictures on the boxes because mm -hmm. Pizza Hut didn't have toys. I don't remember what Pizza Hut did in 99 for Phantom Menace because my memory of how that promotion went was each of the restaurants focused on a different one of the planets featured in the movie. So mm -hmm. it was like Taco Bell had the Tatooine toys. Mm -hmm. KFC had the Naboo toys. Mm -hmm. Pizza Hut had the Coruscant stuff, but I don't think Pizza Hut had toys. So Maybe it was cups. Maybe it was cups. Maybe it was just a separate thing you had to buy. Mm -hmm. And it's possible they just gave Coruscant to Pizza Hut because Coruscant is the boring planet. Yeah. So all that to say, uh, I have a lot of fond memories of what Pizza Huts used to be shaped like, yeah. basically. The only thing I remember as a kid about Pizza Hut was before kale became a very popular vegetable, mm -hmm. Pizza Hut used to be the number one buyer of kale in the world because that's what they would use to decorate the salad bar. Mm. And now that they don't have those salad bars anymore, they probably don't buy any kale. Exactly. That is my one boring Pizza Hut fact of the day. This has been Allie's Boring Pizza Hut Fact of the Day. Ba -ba -ba -ba. That's not going to be a recurring feature. No. <laughs> there might be other boring facts that pop up during the course of this series, sub-series, but no more. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure that uh, there's full histories about why Pizza Hut isn't the Pizza Hut of my childhood anymore. And I'm sure it has something to do with consolidation and someone at Yum! Brands being like, oh, we can eliminate overhead if we just blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And like, nobody really cares. Nobody's dining out anymore. I mean, it's the same reason Taco Bells and McDonald's and stuff don't look like they did when we were kids either. Mm -hmm. But they still fundamentally function as the same kind of dining out experience yeah. as they did when we were kids. They just don't have the same aesthetic anymore. Whereas uh, Pizza Hut basically just went like, we're delivery only now, plus maybe a Pizza Hut Express inside a KFC or Taco Bell. Yeah, yeah. So corporate bullshit has been fascinating to me ever since I was a small child. Mm -hmm. I was I was very uh, intrigued by companies that own other companies that do different things yeah. and what the cross-promotion works. I remember another childhood love of mine that may make its own episode of things we kind of remember someday mm -hmm. uh i loved warner brothers studio stores mm -hmm. uh in the mall even though i could tell it was like okay so this is warner brothers just trying to do the thing disney store already succeeded with or suncoast suncoast to a lesser extent but as a kid, I was only aware of Disney Store. Mm -hmm, of course. I was like, so this is Warner Brothers trying to compete with Disney Store. They had like almost nothing in there that I would actually be interested in buying because it was all clothes and expensive art. But I loved just being in the store because they had the big TV screen and the statues of all the characters. Mm -hmm. And uh, in most of them, they had the little Marvin the Martian spaceship you could crawl through. Yeah. Uh, we should save this for... Uh, yeah, th that should be its own topic. Um, yeah. But the reason I bring up Warner Brothers Studio Store is because I was in one once, and on the TV screen, they were playing a lot of Cartoon Network ad bumpers. Mm -hmm. And I was in there with my dad. I was probably 
10 at the oldest. Mm -hmm. I could actually look up what year this was, but I won't because this is the uh, Mm -hmm. episode, this is the subseries where we don't look things up. Mm -hmm. I was in there at a small age and dad was talking to, to the cashier and the cashier said... Like, yeah, well, uh, Warner Brothers just merged with Turner. Mm -hmm. And I, at my young age, I was like, oh, so that's why there's all the Cartoon Network commercials. Mm. And uh, this cashier was baffled that a child my age would have been aware that Turner owned Cartoon Network. Uh And, like, I was like, well, I mean, it makes sense. Like, Like, Cartoon Network and Warner Brothers have always had some sort of a deal because Bugs and Daffy plays on Cartoon Network. But, uh... But yeah, the the, the consolidation uh, explains why they're heavily promoting Cartoon Network inside the store now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Little whatever year old me and this cashier being flabbergasted that I would know such a thing. Yeah. So the point is I was keeping track of like corporate ownership at an age where I shouldn't have cared. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it was confusing to me when I still didn't have a grasp on specific licenses or specific... Uh, yeah. Like where I'd be like, well, wait... Paramount made Raiders of the Lost Ark, but Disneyland has the Indiana Jones ride. Yeah. But Paramount also, like, Paramount isn't owned by Disney because Paramount released the the, uh, Charlie Brown Christmas VHS, but Disney doesn't have Charlie Brown in the parks because Knott's Mm -hmm. Berry Farm does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was sometimes, like, specific licenses I couldn't quite wrap my head head around. So you were kind of like Charlie Day in that one uh, meme where it's just like... "Mm -hmm." (laughs) Yes, looking for Pepe Silvia in all the corporate ownership. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Just as a young young child who basically... It probably all started because I was trying to figure out, you know, why can't they just have, you know... Mm -hmm. Batman and Star Wars be in the same movie or, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then I'd be like, oh, because Warner Brothers owns these characters. Mm-hmm. And, which, again, we'll do the Warner Brothers Studio Store another time. But uh, all that to say, I was very aware that Pizza Hut, KFC, and Taco Bell were owned by the same company, even though they did not serve the same food yeah. or offer the same experience or have uh, much cross promotion really other than when a pizza Hut express would be in uh like other than in specific locations where the restaurants would combine because mm-hmm. it's like the ad campaigns didn't cross over much again until 1999 when they were doing the uh phantom menace cross promotion and they just did commercials for all of them where they had colonel sanders the taco bell chihuahua mm-hmm. and some pizza hut delivery girl just in Star Wars scenes to promote the Phantom Menace. Yeah. Because this was after they had retired Pizza Head, but they didn't really Mm -hmm. have a Pizza Hut mascot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) The only other Taco Bell commercial campaign I remember uh, before the Chihuahua was Nacho and Dog, again, in Saturday morning commercials, Mm -hmm. where it was a cat named Nacho and a dog named Dog. And they were drawn in sort of a... Like Ren and Stimpy style? Kind of vaguely Ren and Stimpy-esque, but also like a little Gary Baseman sort uh-huh. of style. Okay. And like kind of, I actually kind of remember them basically looking like if cat dog were two separate, was a separate cat and a separate dog. Mm-hmm. You know, if cat dog was normal. Yeah. <laughs> but still drawn in that sort of vaguely Nickelodeon-esque way. Mm-hmm. I don't remember much about that campaign other than it happened. Mm-hmm. It didn't stick in my memory the way Pizza Hut did because it wasn't existentially traumatizing the way Uh, Pizza Head was. Yeah, no, that's valid. I just felt bad for Pizza Head. And I think I wanted the paper dolls or whatever they were just to reshape the narrative in Pizza (laughs) Head's favor. Because I stick up for the underdog. Naturally. Or the under pizza. Indeed so, my darling. So, that is a thing I kind of remember. Ta-da! If you remember these commercials from your childhood or from seeing them back in the day, let me know. If you looked up these commercials, do not tell me what I'm wrong about. But uh, <laughs> you can tell me that you looked them up and what your reactions were. But do not tell me what I remembered wrong. Because if I wanted to know what I was wrong about, I would have looked them up myself. <laughs> this has been Things We Kind of Remember. And this has been At Home with the Dogginses. Later days, y'all. Later days. Bye.